Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lasse Cahirlik. Um, and thank you, Minister, for coming in uh, today to deal with this issue yourself. Um, I stand here today uh, speaking uh, in relation to the role of school principals, primary school principals. When I say primary school principals, I mean those who are uh, teaching principals and those who are walking principals. Uh, I do so uh, speaking uh, um, uh, after meeting the primary school uh, principals network and also working closely with my colleague, uh, uh, Councillor Alison Gilliland of the INTO, who's raising this issue with me consistently. Put simply, Minister, the working conditions of primary school principals are unbearable. And I know you have a forum set up in relation to dealing with many of the issues I'm going to outline. But you have a unique opportunity now as part of the budget to deal with this issue. Because if you do not, the conditions and deal with the conditions in which they're working, the actual educational benefit at the most primary level, which is so important, where my own children are uh, today, um, will actually suffer. I was gobsmacked to find out that the guidance in relation to the role of principals hasn't been updated since the circular in 1975. That's before I was even born. It was in the year I was born. Um, this isn't acceptable. There has been a whole range of different missives and circulars issued in relation to the role but the actual role hasn't been up updated. So principals are expected to be in charge of all education and teaching in the schools, but are also expected to be administrators. And the administration has grown to a level now that's insufferable. For instance, last year, there were 84 circulars issued to primary school principals. Now, how in the name of God can principals be in charge of the teaching component of the school, which is so important, and be in charge of administration at that level with the resources that they have. Minister, three people I know quite well, one of them, which is a good friend of mine, all female, have resigned their jobs as primary school teachers. They're more or less the same age as me. In fact, a couple of them are younger than me. So in their late 30s, early 40s, they're resigning as principals because they can't bear the conditions they're working in. And it's a real issue for them. It's actually more difficult to get back in to teaching in the relevant schools or anywhere else because they don't have really any rights. They don't have panel rights even. So that's an issue you also need to deal with. But given all the responsibility that principals now have, given the fact that they have to work through the summer, in many cases, deal with the backlog of administration, we now have to as an Oireachtas and you as a minister, deal with these real issues. They have requirements in relation to more resources. They have a need for greater paying conditions. They have to know that the Department of Education is going to support them in their role because voluntary boards just aren't going to cut it as regards picking up the slack and so many good people are on those boards, so many brilliant chairs of boards of management. But it's still ultimately left with the principals. It's still ultimately left with them to actually deal with having the best uh, teaching conditions and all the administration that is coming down the line. Many of which, dare I say it, is necessary, but some of which, dare I say it, probably could be dealt with better. You have to find a model, you have to find ways and means and resources of helping these people. Otherwise, my children and the children of this country, their educational opportunities and their educational uh, benefits are unfortunately, may I say, going to uh, uh, be affected. Thank you. My minister's four minutes. First of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Deputy Kelly's interest in, in this issue because it is um, the, the role of leaders in our schools is hugely important. I want to give him some reassurance, though. We have successfully recruited 6,000 additional teachers to, uh, to our schools in, in the last three years. Uh, and as you know, the standards of reading and the standards of mathematics among our 10-year-olds are the best in Europe. Uh, so we have a great deal to be grateful to for the role and manner in which our schools are managed. 
That doesn't mean, of course, that we should stand still. And I have set uh, an ambitious target that we would seek uh, by 2026 to have the best, uh, the best education and training service. And that does mean improvements in literacy and improvements in the use of digital technologies, improving in the learning environment, you breaking down cycles of disadvantage, reforming curricula to update it to be, uh, to be uh, more relevant to people. And that does involve change. And of course, we rely on principles as the leaders of change uh, within, uh, within their schools. Um, I'd like to point out some of the things that we have been doing. Um, uh, for example, last year we appointed uh, 2,600 additional uh, assistant principals. Um, not only that, but we sec uh, secured a negotiated an agreement with the trade unions about a new approach to management, which involves a more devolved and collective leadership. Uh, it also involves um, reporting on the role that uh, these assistant principals take with, within their school and moving away from appointment based on, you know, uh, your turn having come around. Uh, we also, uh, as you know, have made a very substantial investment in primary education, which has helped principals in having additional resources at their disposal. And I have an, uh, indicated some of them in the, the reply there. Uh, we've reduced the pupil-teacher ratio to the lowest ever in the history of the state. Uh, we have provided over 600 uh, resource teachers, over 1,200, uh, 1,800 SNAs in primary primary schools, uh, and hundreds of schools are now operating uh, innovative pro uh, projects in clusters, where principals and others within the school are taking leadership role in either adopting te technology, applying DESH uh, initiatives, uh, creative initiatives across the, the, the system. Specifically in relation to the, to the uh, teaching principle, I, I this year allocated additional time off to allow teaching principals manage their, uh, their responsibilities more effectively. Uh, increased it by two days, three days and four days, depending on the size of the, the school, and it's outlined there in the reply for you. Uh, so that has been a, a, that is a continuing demand from uh, teaching principals that they would have more time off. Um, the other thing I did, and it was, it came directly from the INTO, indeed the president of the INTO, the former president of the INTO, uh, where he was impressed by an initiative of clusters, where 14, there were 14 clusters in existence, where uh, you know, more remote uh, schools could come together and cluster pool their time off, if you like, for managing it, and that has allowed them to employ a permanent position, which has been really beneficial. So I've extended the number of clusters there from 14 to, to 50 there. The big thing I think that you didn't refer to at all is the creation of the Centre for School Leadership. Uh, this is now uh, investing in, in the leaders in our schools. Each year about a thousand principals uh, get opportunities to have the support of mentoring, coaching, are indeed doing uh, postgraduate qualifications to improve their capacity to, to manage uh, their resource. Um, so that, th these are very significant in changes. And specifically on the issue uh, of, uh, you know, as you rightly said, a lot of principals feel there's too much coming at them. Uh, they do recognise the importance of like child protection, you know, new curricula, new ways of teaching. All of these things are important. Uh, and we have tried to, we've set up a forum to look at the sequencing of those things to try and uh, allow them manage uh, those issues. And in terms of pay, of course, principals are, are in the same way benefiting under the uh, pay agreement. So I, I, I absolutely support your belief that investing in leadership is possible the best bang for our buck that we can get. Um, and we have started to put in place measures, I think, that show our commitment Remind in this area. Deputy Kelly, two minutes. Minister, you have to answer the question regarding why so many young principals are resigning from their jobs. That has to be a concern for you. Will you please update the guidance, which hasn't been updated since 1975, in relation to principals? I'm sure people will be shocked when you actually have to outline what their full role is. Uh, a survey in relation to uh, under, the, under the primary school network showed that 89% of principals felt that their mental health had been affected, has been affected by the amount of work that they're having to do. And 84% said they are considering stepping aside from their job. Now, I have a very good friend who's working in a local school for me, who went to school with me, who's resigned from her job. She actually doesn't have any rights. Will you please address the fact that her principals actually choose to go back into the classroom because of the volume of the work that's coming on principals, that they actually have some rights, given the amount of time that they've given. Uh, furthermore, I think you're really not dealing with the issues in relation to pay parity 
there's pay equality across the, all uh, areas for teachers required, but pay parity in relation to commitments that were given to principals back in 2007. We need to look at the whole issue of restoration of posts across the board in the primary sector. My wife is a teacher, posts were suppressed, they need to be brought back in in order to help principals. <coughs> We need to understand why there has been a change in relation to the appointment figure you need to get for getting back a mainstream teacher. Why is that higher than it is to actually retain a teacher in a school? That doesn't make sense. Uh, we need an immediate increase in the ancillary grant allowed for secretarial, caretakers and cleaning staff. And once and for all, will you please help those teachers who work in small schools who are actually teaching principals? I have a friend of mine, he sat beside me in primary school. He's a brilliant uh, teacher and he's a brilliant principal. His name is John. But they deserve a day a week off in order to deal with what I've already outlined, 84 circulars. When you're in a three, four, a five teacher school, 84 circulars, to be an actual working principal and deal with this at the same time is impossible. And is it any wonder that principals are actually resigning from their posts? They want to stay teaching, but they didn't sign up to being able Minister to do this conclude. amount of work because simply it is un, it's, it's inconceivable to do the work. They don't get paid well enough. And for a fact, they actually can't do Minister it. So conclude. will you please deal with that issue as well? Two minutes. Well, I, I, I think Deputy Kelly is long enough around uh, these houses to know that uh, this government and the previous government and all governments that I know of have engaged in collective bargaining uh, across the, the sector with the public service unions. Uh, it hasn't been a question of segregating different groups or principles within that. There are, you know, so we do collectively negotiate arrangements and we have recently, as you acknowledged uh, grudgingly, or, 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 albeit, that we have this week negotiated uh, restoration to uh, young teachers who were recruited at lower rates of pay, which we all know why they were. They were recruited because uh, of that. You, you raise why do we not just, uh, you know, wh what about the posts of, of responsibilities to used to be? I, I, I don't know whether you listened to my reply, but I have restored 2,500 uh, such posts, 2,600. That means that there's 37% of teachers are now in positions where they have our assistant principal, where they're assistant. I, I mean, I don't know whether you're, you're interested in the answer or just imparting information. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 well, I, I don't know how I can answer without interruption at every moment. Uh, so, you know, we, we are restoring this. I think the Centre for School Leadership is a fantastic initiative. We are investing in that and we're seeing more principals getting the opportunity to develop their skills. And that is re really important. I am extending and I have extended the days when uh, teachers who are uh, teaching principals have time off in order to manage those resources, and I provided for clusters. So there, no, the, you didn't. Again, you didn't answer to the, the listen to the question. It was two, three, and four days a week, depending on the size of the school. In addition, providing clusters where schools can pool their resource to take on a permanent position to, to support that. So you know, I, I think we're making progress. Uh, I'm glad that the, the deputy was, is is urging uh, more investment in education because it's something that uh, you know, I want to do, uh, but. I think the, the deputy should acknowledge that there's a lot of really good principals doing great work and we have succeeded in a, at a very difficult period in driving our education system to have the highest standards of literacy and numeracy in Europe and that's no mean achievement uh, and I think we oh need to credit uh, our leaders in the schools we with, move with on that. To the next business.